Assalamu alaikum. Someone is asking, Sayyidi, what is the reality of no ruz? The, what is the reality of no ruz? Inshallah. This in the lataif of the qalb, we went over that uh, from the lataif of the qalb, the yellow was a summer and then from summer becomes red which is the fall. Summer is the height of life and fall is now a phase of death, that's why it's red. That every tree, the leaves are entering a state of death, Allah says, I show you upon the horizon and I show you within yourself. For people who don't ever want to think of death, look to the seasons. The season is showing us that the sun and all its height of glory is the fulfillment of life, everyone's happy living. <coughs> then fall comes a state of death and it's passing the aqfa and the blackness in which it enters its death. And what comes after the fall is the winter which is the barzakh because it's white and like the malakut, it, it enters in a state in which is frozen. So the immense reality of winter is a frozen state when Allah said, I can preserve you too. So that your world of malakut is timeless and a, a, and a small understanding of timelessness is winter. When you look to winter you say, everything is frozen. So it's frozen and all its beauty and then begins the spring. So the spring has an immense reality, that's why we call it the new day. And this was an immense reality from Mawlana Shah Naqshaban that the realities of Nuruz and the reality of spring and the reality of resurrection. Where Nuruz symbolized and spring symbolizes for us when Allah is going to resurrect that which was like dead, that all the trees and all the, the, the surroundings that are frozen by winter. Allah resurrects them in spring that those same trees they come back to life. The same leaves on every branch begin to sprout anew and Allah saying, I'm doing this all the time everywhere because where is winter here it's winter somewhere else. So it's on continuously on this globe surrounding all our life Allah is resurrecting and you're not you're not more difficult for me to resurrect. So for those whom are the people of tafakkur, they look to it as an immense sign of resurrection. And that, Ya Rabbi resurrect me as something new at any moment that we want to be a seed that goes into the dirt and from the dirt the seed to finally perish and a new tree, <coughs> a new tree to sprout, a reality to sprout from realities. <coughs> that represents, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it represents the immense reality of resurrection that we're all asking to be resurrected. That, Ya Rabbi, let my bad character to go down. And that which is new and blessed and, and that which is pleasing to you to be resurrected into your Divinely Presence. So it has an immense reality for us to stop to look at the reality of spring on how Allah resurrects. And described on Yawm al-Mashar that when the Day of Judgment begins a rain like sperm begin to rain upon the earth. As it's raining it hits and every coxis is a piece of Allah preserves from human beings a part within the bottom of their spine that cannot be destroyed by fire, by cold, by nothing. That rain when it comes and touches that reality that insan will begin to resurrect and reappear. And Allah from that understanding of Yawm al-Mashar Allah say, don't think it's so far off because the same thing happens as soon as the April shower begins. 
So as soon as the, uh, the Nowruz is beginning, the 21st of uh, March means now the time of resurrection is about to begin. By the April showers then there's tremendous barakah in catching those April showers. That many people put something out to collect the water from the April showers because it has from that reality of the day of Yawmul Qiyamah that it touches all the trees, all the plants, all the flowers and everything comes back to life and resurrects all. How they all resurrect on as soon as the April rain comes. So Allah saying, it's not something that the hocus pocus, look outside and you see it happening all the time around you. So then Judgment Day is just a symbol of that understanding. So it has an immense reality to stop and to take notice of what Allah is doing. This is the moments of resurrection and then we are brought anew at every moment. And inshaAllah the April showers to dress us, bless us, take away sickness, take away difficulties and resurrect us in all in goodness and in, in good character and in good health inshaAllah. And for us then April will begin the holy month of Ramadan inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sayyidi, a couple of questions related to destiny. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Oh. Is our destiny written in stone or is there a way to change it? Also, did the tyrants also accept their faith to be tyrants and say bala just as those who were destined to be guided? It's good and it's bad. It's good and it's bad. Whatever destiny was written, it's, it's good and it's bad. Keep away from philosophy schools and taking courses in philosophy, they take you away from belief. So tariqah is not a philosophy course if, if a tyrant accepted his destiny to be bad. A tyrant doesn't accept anything, he doesn't accept Allah and nothing. It's not about the tyrant, it's about the believer accepting the tyrant is bothering you. You're not here to worry about somebody else's grave and who accepted their grave and who didn't accept their grave. That's between that person and Allah what their destiny was, did they live to the destiny or did they follow shaitan? The destiny for us to understand is the good character, that's all that Allah wants from us. Instead of living a life of complaining, that's why I say stay away from philosophy schools and philosophy classes in school. This is about when I sit in my life and I think every difficulty, am I going to complain about it or I'm going to listen to the shaykh that I accept it. Now somebody's bothering me, I don't have to worry about did this person accept from Allah to be somebody who bothers somebody. You're going far, you're not staying in your lane. You know when you, when you mix into other people's business they say, stay in your lane, you're going into different lanes now. Allah is asking you about you and your lane and your life. Are you accepting what comes to your life? And the shaykh then guides you to accept it, be patient with it and that is your call out in your prayers that you ask, Ya Rabbi please, ufawudu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi libad you see my condition. If this was, was written for me, give me strength to overcome. And then I'll inspire you du'as that you should be reciting from the ath. All these du'as are from the Sultan and awliya. All these du'as and salawats are from the Sultan of saints, all of them. You should be reciting them. If you're happy with the destiny, alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi grant me to be shukr so that you don't take it away from me. Help me to have good character so that I don't anger you. So this is about how to resolve to have good character. No need to complain, I don't see you that often, I'm like this or like that. It's whatever Allah has written. Everybody is exactly where Allah wrote for them to be. Be patient, endure and Allah has a plan. Sayyidi a couple of more questions on destiny. They're saying, can a dua change your destiny? Can a dua change your destiny? Why not? Because you don't know your destiny. 
So how, how do you know what it is? But to understand again, this is the turuqs come to teach the akhlaq is that to submit ourselves with what we just said is to, to asking and praying to Allah that I don't know my destiny Ya Rabbi. If this is what you have written for me, alhamdulillah give me strength to endure. Because if it's something heavy and difficult, a sickness, if there's a, if there's a shifa and healing grant me that shifa and that becomes their dialogue and their intimate relationship with Allah But just to email that, my life is bad, it's horrible, everything is difficult coming to me, everything is difficult. That's when we wanted to talk about was the reality of destiny, is that on the yawm, on the uh, on the day of promises, the souls that committed themselves, don't think of them as children, don't think of a soul as an age from their body. These are ancient souls. When Allah in His infinite wisdom sees the line of, of your descendants and say, they're not going to reach to their haqqaiqs, are you willing to take a course of difficulty? To enter into this world as being crippled, as being sick, as being lamed, as being, as being in, in, in an ocean of difficulty for even the bite of a mosquito that comes to you, Allah must be raising you. And on that day those souls are not children, those souls are, are, are not old people. So when people say, why do these things happen to people? These are ancient souls and those souls are lofty and lordly. So when you see somebody with Down syndrome and diseases and sicknesses, these are very high level souls that on the day of promises they accepted, Ya Rabbi if by means of this difficulty, this short life, this hardship, this, this teaching, this testing, whatever it's going to be, if by means of that it's a support to my jat and to my descendants and to my family line, waqalu bala. So it means the souls were eager to be of service, nothing's wasted, nothing is, is, is doing something out of play. Allah just said, we didn't create this out of playing but this is a testing facility in which Allah want to bestow immense blessings. So the people who have no faith and their life is all about physicality, say, oh why if there's a loving God is this happening? It's exactly happening because He's loving. When that child comes into a short life, comes and goes, the child had accepted it because it's not a child, it's an ancient soul that accepted that I would come into the world and I'm only going to come through this difficulty and go. And they said, bala. And another may come into this world and take a lifetime of being crippled and lamed and in difficult position. And you don't think Allah by means of what that soul has entered in? is being dressed and blessed and every type of dressing is coming upon them and what type of arrangement did they make and what are they carrying from all their descendants. So it means uh, it's, not, it's not even possible to understand the infinite wisdom of Allah but the only way to look at it is immense rahmah, immense rahmah. That that's not a child that you're looking at, that's an ancient soul. That's not something difficult, that's not a horror, that's not something of a horrific war or something happening. But these are all ancient souls that accepted these hardships and by means of those hardships their entire jat and family line are being lifted and raised and in many other deep realities. In, in, the, khulu, in the khalwa and the turuqs have gone into khalwa and they've seen Allah's rahmah of what happens in the world of light and souls and when people are being tortured and put under difficulty and so this is un unimaginable. Everything from the immense oceans of love for Allah and the believer only thinks of himself and his grave and how he's going to pass. Not to make a philosophy of the whole world and what about the dog, what about this one, what about that one, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. How can someone increase the Nur Muhammadan light within the heart? How can someone increase the, the Nur Muhammadi within the heart? By following all the practices from the, the Muhammadan way. 
by doing the excessive amounts of salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad by absorbing yourself with Muhammadan realities and nothing else, nothing else. Don't waste your time in, in other knowledges and uh, in other teachings, they actually can give you shak and that's the danger. That you watch uh, uh, somebody from a different level of belief and immediately like shaitan throwing a, an arrow into your heart, immediately you have a shak because that person teaching was not correct, you know and they could be big, you think they're like big scholars, famous scholars. One scholar was, they said he was so big, big, big. You know the mawlid of the Prophet it can be a choice, you can choose it or not choose it. As soon as you said that I, you gave the whole world the clue that you're not from wilayat, you're not from even the understanding and the key of all Muhammadan haqqaiqs is the mawlid of Nabi because the light won't be born in your heart until you celebrate the light of being born in, in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And by means of celebrating the milad it doesn't mean that you attended the big mawlid but Ya Rabbi I'm sitting even by my house, I want to invite all my, my guests and poor for dinner and I want to, to make salawats that night to celebrate the immense love I have for Sayyidina Muhammad Just that mawlid and Nabi alone will open the mawlid within your heart and the Muhammadan haqqaiq and the birth of that reality within the heart of the believer. That's, that's the immensity. When someone talk like that, that it doesn't matter, they're telling you their station. And if you listen to that station enough, you never grow, you actually may go downward especially because then they start to say other inappropriately and bad things. We consider bad because they don't do tahzim and nabi, they are not at the caliber of magnifying the magnificent status and reality of Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If we know that an object has sihr, do we have to throw it away or is there a way to remove the sihr and then use the object again? <laughs> if we know an object has black magic in it, do we have to throw the object away or can we clean the object and use it again? Uh, if, if, you, if you think anything has something of a negative energy that you're definite it has black magic in it, then best to expose of it in water, running water to river, lake, somewhere where the water is just going to go and, and take that difficulty away inshaAllah. Now if it's something of a you know immense importance to the family and you think there might be a bad energy then you recite over it, Ila Sharaf and Nabi and make the madad of the shaykhs over that. InshaAllah everything should be okay but if you think something is, is, was given to you with very bad intentions and very bad energies, dispose of it in the flowing water and let the angels take away every difficulty inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa um, What is the importance of visiting graves of awliya and asking their help? And what uh, evidence can we give to say someone who doesn't agree? Walaykum As Salaam, what, what is the benefit of, of the visiting of the maqam of awliyaullah and what evidence can we give to those who don't agree? One is, is stay away from people who don't agree because if you show me who your friends are, I tell you who you are. So keep away from people whom their, their belief system is going in a different direction. And what was the… the I just watched the, the video, true, true Power, huh? The latest video that came out in Divine Love, please watch the videos that are coming through the YouTube channel. So the, the Divine Love series that came out last Saturday and the Saturday before that all of our teachings are on that subject. So these are maqams of light, these are the presence of Allah saying, I am with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, 
this is the best of company. So anybody who wants to be with Allah, wants to be with Sayyidina Muhammad wants to be with all the pious people and souls, they go to maqams because you're not worshipping, you're not praying to the maqam but you're going there and praying to Allah because there's a light and a blessing. Watch that video and it describes many dalils that why Sayyidina Zakariya, Prophet of Allah all his life 99 years his du'a was not accepted. Why as soon as he stepped into the maqam of Sayyidina Maryam? You know he's the Imam of Al-Aqsa of the, the, the temple in Jerusalem Sayyidina Zakariya. And the Imam of the temple his prayer was not accepted until he went to the maqam of an awliya. And when she's a waliya, a waliya, he went into the maqam of a waliya, saw that she's all this fruit, his heart was pure and saw this is an immense… As soon as he makes the du'a, he didn't even finish the du'a Sayyidina Jibra'il appeared, said, your du'a has been accepted, your son Yahya is coming. So what, what more proof does somebody want? And Allah said, any, anywhere that its foundation was laid by piety, pray there. Because anything that was established by pious people and piety has immense blessings. That's not even in the world of light yet, that what type of lights are there, what type of blessings are there. As soon as you enter into that precinct, every type of light is being dressed upon your soul. Not that you ask for big bank accounts and Allah sending money but the reality of your soul, the Muhammadan love all being dressed upon your soul and you'll receive it on Yawm al mashar on the day of judgment. That what, where are these lights coming from? Where are all these blessings coming from? And they say, remember these maqams you visited? Yes from there. All these lights are now coming and the shaykh's intercessions are, are dressing you inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. How do we stop wanting what we want? I have PTSD and OCD and I'm so tired of my thoughts. I feel like my heart is blocked and I'm stuck in a loop. How can I overcome this? Ooh. How do we stop wanting what we want and I have PSD, PTSD and yeah. OCD. Oh, OCD, inshaAllah. Oh. Yeah, that uh, you know, that, uh, with tariqah comes to offer spiritual help, and the tariqah is a three prong that the mind, body, and soul, and three have to be good and then it's firm. If my body is sick, uh, that sickness will become a zulamat an oppression and will begin to oppress my mind and my soul. So I can't leave my body into sickness because then I would be an oppressor to myself. So these three realities that have to be in check, that's why you have to go to a doctor to get your physical health. You can't just leave an open wound in your leg and say, no I'm going to now do my spiritual practices and it's going to make it better. No, it's actually the pain will be so intense. It will disturb your mind and as a result of your mind and your body your soul will now be in deficit because you won't pray, you won't meditate, you won't do nothing. So any one of these if your soul is in difficulty how your body and mind are going to be of benefit if the soul is darkened. And then if your mind, if your mind is not functioning then again it's an oppression against the body and the soul because anything the shaykh is saying you're hearing something else. Everything that shaykh is giving guidance you're, you're saying no. The shaykh said, don't do these things, you say he do them because he's whispering to my ear to do them. And uh, we come across many people like that, that they keep saying left and right. You say left, they say, no, no you said to go right, I, I know you came to me and said go right. So now that zulamat is now oppressing your ability to understand the teaching. So there's literally no teaching when your mind is not functioning. So that's a dangerous student and they just go on the roof and say, I can fly. So no, everything has to be solid. If your body is sick, go take your medicine and we're older age and we take our medicine. If the mind is sick, go get your medicine so that the mind and the neuro, the neuro receptors are firing correctly. 
and then sit with the shaykh to teach you about spirituality that your body now is being taken care of with your medicine, the mind has been taken care of with the medicine and then you sit <coughs> for spirituality so that Allah will dress and bless the soul to become more powerful inshaAllah. But don't sit with a deficiency saying, oh no the, the shaykhs will take it away. No it doesn't work that way because you can't even reach to that point because the deficiency will cause such a disturbance that something will go wrong, inshaAllah. Salaam alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam uh, how can we make our internal thoughts positive towards Allah when we are in difficulties? How can we make our internal thoughts positive with Allah when we are in, <coughs> in internal difficulties? Then you watch the videos. That's the whole concept of the teachings and the teaching specifically tonight of destiny. That when we're in difficulty that you, you accept the destiny and that Allah has wrote it because to be in difficulty without what we just said tonight, your mind will tell you that Allah has forsaken you and forgotten you. And then shaitan comes as a, as a partner with your nafs to say, Allah forgot you come out and drink with us, come out and be a renegade to Allah But the teachings and the tariqah teachings are coming to teach you Allah's love. Because the one who making us sit here tonight is Allah and Allah is teaching, teach them that I love them and that they promised to achieve these realities. They promised to endure difficulties because I wanted to raise them. So, well look at those other people how they have this and that and they drive these big things and they run these big you know things like that. that so, but Allah said, I didn't promise them anything. They, they were destined to be in shaitan's hands. But when I wrote your destiny, I wanted to give you the most and, and I wanted to carry difficulties from your family line and you were eager to please Sayyidina Muhammad and you said, Bala. So then it comes to your heart to feel that you're loved by Allah you're loved by Prophet Then don't give up, keep going, keep struggling. You don't understand what victory is in Allah's eyes. You think victory is you know the, the money, the cars and, and a video from MTV but that's not the victory. It's your struggling, enduring difficulty everywhere and you're keeping your faith. He says, who's better? The one whom, who walks upright on a, on a broken path that he's happy, she's happy and the path below them is in tremendous difficulty. They walk upright because they know that Allah with them. And that's what's important is that whatever comes Allah's with us inshaAllah, difficulty comes Allah's with us. So we try to keep that within our heart that, Ya Rabbi I know that you love me and these are testings that are coming and give me more power Ya Rabbi, give me energy, give me himma, give me the ability to endure and then you recite the du'as from the app, you recite the salawats from the app. The whole tariqah is based on teaching these realities inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yatifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. You know the, the one whom, who never felt a, a sickness at night doesn't know the sweetness of sleep. Have you, have you felt sick at night? I know if you've had back pain. If you have like a sciatic nerve or you're pinched back, you cry all night if I can just sleep just a little bit in peace Ya Rabbi because the pain is so intense. You can't lie down on your side, you can't put your stomach on the floor. So how many people are heedless of the immensity of a beautiful night's sleep and they complain about everything, everything is bad and bad and they sleep very nice at night. Just this one act of sleeping. Until Allah give you a sciatic nerve and a back pain, you can't appreciate the sweetness of lying on your bed if you have a bed and put your head on a pillow if you have a pillow. We pray that Allah give us deeper understanding and, and to understand the sweetness of life and that Allah's rahmah and mercy to dress us and to bless us inshaAllah. And the best blessing is the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad within our hearts. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa.
وبصير السور الفاتحه